Hello everyone. Um, so welcome to my second video on the classical Sicilian defense. Uh, my name is Luis, um, but I go by Garuda Pura um, on chess.com, on Twitch, and on YouTube. So in this video, I would like to explain um, one of the variations in the classical Sicilian defense, uh, namely um, the sixth move F3. So we can get the classical Sicilian from the move order E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, C takes D4, Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and the move here, knight c6, um, which is the characteristic of the classical Sicilian defense. And in here, uh, we would like to discuss the move f3. So, um, we also know that we can, first off, we can enter the classical, classical Sicilian from this move order of e4, c5, knight f3, and the move knight c6. Um, and after d4, c takes d4, knight d4, we can roughly get the same position after d6. But this obviously depends on which type of anti-Sicilian you want to take on. For example, if we play the move order with d6, we need to be very aware of the move bishop e5 check. Um, and if we enter the move order with knight c6, then we need to be aware of the Rosolimo. So it really depends on what you prefer to play. Either way, uh, we get this um, position uh, from the open Sicilian. And the move here, f3, it's very logical. It's... Basically, white just wants to go for an English attack uh, with the moves bishop e3, queen d2, uh, castles long, and try to push the pawns up the board to attack um, black once black has castled kingside. And this move f3 just prevents knight g4 in case bishop e3 happens. So it's very logical. And the move here that we could play, um, the most common move and the most principled move is to play the move e5. We can also play the move knight d4 here, but that's um, I don't personally recommend it. And it's probably not the strongest response, but it is nice to know. So, uh, we will just go on with the main line here with e5. And this really puts a question to this knight on d4 of where it wants to go. Uh, it, could, it, it obviously has uh, four squares that it could go to, or actually five, like five options. Uh, five reasonable options. Um, firstly, we will discuss the um, suboptimal move of knight takes c6. This is obviously dubious because it allows black to just get the center. The center pawns uh, but basically this is um, black has I believe that black has fully equalized here um, but more often than not uh, this is an easier position to play from the black side because also of this uh, diagonal weakness that white has already uh, committed to so in this position um, white can play either the move bishop c4 um, or the dubious bishop g5 and I think that after bishop g5 Black is already slightly better after the move h6. So basically, this bishop, um, if it's forced to retreat, then uh, we then we should be really happy to play the move bishop e6 here. And suddenly, this bishop, uh, this light squared bishop, can't go to c4, where it's typically the strongest at. So by by this move of bishop uh, bishop g5, h6, and bishop e6, uh, or bishop e3, I, uh, apologies, um, we can already take control of this long diagonal, and we should be already better here. But if they decide to take, and after queen takes f6, we have the bishop pair advantage. We have more development, or uh, at least it's easier to develop here with bishop e7 and bishop e6. Um, we have the center pawn majority, and we also have the open b-file that we can play our rook to b8 to. So here, I believe that black is already better. Uh, so if, it's, if bishop g5 is not the um, most precise move, um, the best try that white can make of this um, kind of dubious position is the move bishop c4. And after which we can just continue with our typical development scheme in the classical Sicilian, which is that we usually we usually play the move bishop e7 first before bishop e6. Uh, we will get into that a bit later, but um, white can choose to castle here and we can also castle. And basically uh, we always have this threat of uh, queen b6 if the bishop on c1 ever moves and we're just gonna pick up the um, the b2 pawn, for example, bishop g5, then we can play queen b6 and pick up the b2 pawn. And so here, it's logical to play king h1 just to step out, uh, out, of, uh, step out of any of these um, checks. And so the move here that we can play is the move h6, just further restricting the c1 bishop. Um, so white is already really cramped here. And so a logical move to play from the white side is to try to liberate the position with f4. But here, we don't need to take and allow white to uh, develop their bishop. Um, sometimes it's okay, but in this specific position, 
um, we can play the interesting move bishop e6, which doesn't seem um, very intuitive because we can, uh, after the moves bishop e6 and fe6, um, white can choose to double up our pawns in the center, for example, fe5 and de5. And we have this um, double pawns, we have these double pawns in the center, um, which optically maybe it seems um, kind of weak and can be targeted. But objectively, this is completely fine, and actually, I would argue that it's beneficial uh, for black to control all of these squares in the center. And it's not really easy to um, be targeted. For example, something logical would be b3 and bishop b2, but with the following sequence, we can see that it's not very realistic. So, after queen e2, which just avoids a queen trade, we can play the move queen b6 here. And obviously, eyeing this pawn. Um, so... Something that looks logical would be the move like b3, just trying to develop the bishop to b2 and try to target these seemingly weak pawns. But in this position, we actually have a very strong move. The move is knight g4. So the reason is that this uh, white's back rank is very weak because it's very difficult to find a harmonious um, placement of the of white's pieces. And so like, for example, queen b6 attacked the b2 pawn. So the bishop really couldn't move and now we're immediately t making use of the weaknesses that white has created. And in here, um, a possible continuation could be rook f8, rook f8, and h3. But we have the very strong move here. Um, okay, so obviously before uh, queen g4 just runs into rook f, um, yeah, rook f1, which is mate. Um, so after h3, we have the very strong move here, rook f2. And basically, uh, white cannot take this knight. Because after queen takes g4, we have the move rook f1, king h2, queen g1, king g3, queen f2, and basically we have this move queen e1. And there is basically no good way to prevent um, mate here, and white and black is just winning. So if it's uh, so if white cannot take this knight, then the only um, seemingly logical move is the move queen e1. After which we can just play rook takes c2. Um, and obviously, like, we have major threats here, bishop b4, for example, um, knight f2 as well. And so hg4 is logical, and we can play the move also queen d4. So putting pressure here, there are no bishop b2 or bishop d2 moves. Uh, so white is forced to give back the piece. But after queen c3, queen c3 and rook c3, this rook is just immensely active. And for example, um, bishop takes um, a7 would result in bishop a bishop a3. And so these pawns cannot move, uh, for example, uh, basically all of these pawns cannot move, and black is just super active and should be cleaning up this game quite easily with like rook c2 and just like putting pressure on the second rank over here. So this should be easily um, better for, yeah, um, better for black. Objectively, we can see that stockfish values is as about equal, but I would say that uh, this is definitely, from a practical standpoint, e way easier to play from the black side. Okay, so that covers the move knight c6 in this position, which is not a very good move because of the following continuation, uh, the previous continuation that we saw. And so uh, another move is the move knight f5 here, which is already a mistake. So firstly, we can just play the move bishop f5, e f5, and we can play the move d5 here. Uh, so we already have a strong pawn center, and white really has no way to punish us uh, for controlling this uh, much space. After the move bishop g5, we can play bishop b4, so pinning the knight, and a3, and we can just damage um, white's structure here and play castles. And so we should already be, uh, we should already pretty much be better here. Uh, for example, bishop f6 doesn't really do anything because we can just play queen f6, and taking this pawn is very dangerous because we can bring our rooks. Um, also, this pawn on f5 is hanging. Um, basically, this should be, um, yeah, just simply um, better for black. For example, queen d5, we also have this move e4. And suddenly, c3 is very weak. We can bring our rooks into the game. Um, e takes f3 is also a threat just to open up the file. And this should be uh, lights out. So, um, so if obviously the move knight f5 here is also bad, it's even worse than uh, knight takes c6. Um, let's look at another sideline, which is knight de2, after which we can just simply play bishop e6 here. And so, uh, something that I would like to bring your attention to is that typically in the classical Sicilian, we develop our bishop to e7 first before we play bishop e6. But in this specific case, we can get away with playing bishop e6 uh, for the following continuation. Um, 
Okay, there are obviously two moves here. White can simply just develop normally with bishop e3, or white can try to um, attempt to punish us with the move knight d5 here. Um, and basically, uh, because we want to already open up the position with, like, for example, bishop e3, and we can hit the center with d5 and try to equalize, I think that, um, as you know, um, in the in any Sicilian, basically, or in most Sicilians, if we once we play the move d5, we should have already equalized. Um, so if um, white doesn't play bishop e3 here and plays into the move knight d5, then we can play the move bishop d5, e takes d5, and queen a5. And so there's only one way to defend this pawn on d5, which is knight c3, and after which we can play knight d4. And so we get this active uh, knight over here, and it can't be kicked with c3. So once uh, white plays bishop e3, we can play knight d5. So we're just winning a pawn here. But uh, obviously white has significant pressure on the on our, on our own d4 knight. So they can take on d4. He takes d4, queen d4, and knight c3. Uh, knight c3, and basically we're going to ruin um, white's pawn structure here. Uh, bc3, um, and, yeah, and in here we can just play the move d5 here. So our idea is to just to castle queenside and play bishop e7. Uh, and I think that this is uh, this is definitely uh, engine approved. I've uh, consulted Stockfish uh, for this idea, so it doesn't seem so. Um, yeah, hopefully this doesn't seem too strange uh, for you, because typically um, it seems kind of dangerous to castle into this open um, semi-open B file, but in this position it's okay because, um, yeah, White's king is also in the center and we can get away with it. So a possible continuation would be like rook b1, bishop d6, queen g7, and castles queenside. And this should be about equal, um, but we need to find the uh, maybe accurate way to continue. But white also needs to be very careful as to not um, slip up and just be worse. So after king f1, queen a2, rook d1, we can trade and play queen b1, king f2, queen b6, king f1. And obviously here, after queen b1, we can go for a draw, um, given that our opponent is like higher rated, for example. But um, there are probably other ways to continue the game. Uh, for example, you go queen b6 and um, try to go rook e8 or something uh, like those ideas. Um, so yeah, that's just one possibility to uh, try to force a draw. But this is kind of, um, I would say, I mean, personally, from practical standpoint, also kind of ridiculous to try to remember a... Um, kind of a force sequence or a forcing sequence uh, that leads to just tr that just leads to equality, for example. But basically, I mean, we should already be very happy here, um, knowing that White has already damaged their pawn structure, and it's just a possibility that we can castle queenside. Okay. So that is just one of the possibilities. Um, if we play Bishop E six and the and our opponent plays Knight D five there. Um, another move that seems logical would be bishop e3, uh, but as I've mentioned before, and in generally all, um, generally most Sicilians, once we play the move d5, we've, we've already equalized here. So after the move e6, d5, knight d5, knight d5, and bishop d5, um, we can just um, continue uh, the line here with knight c3 and bishop e4, queen d2, queen a5, a3, bishop e6. So we just want to play with d8 here. And it's going to be very strong and obviously um, white cannot take on b4 because the rook is hanging so a3 doesn't really do anything bishop e6 bishop d3 castles kingside castles and we can obviously just take on c3 and we should be um, fairly happy here um, to play this position just um, white does have the bishop here but um, they have this like um, pretty severe weakness of the double c pawns so they continue, uh, yeah, this game could continue like rook a c8, rook e1, rook f e1, b6, uh, a4, f6, f4, rook f e8, bishop a6, um, yeah, rook c7, bishop b5, rook d8, bishop f2, and king f7. And basically, we're just going to try to punish uh, white for having these um, double pawns. And I think that these bishop pairs, uh, that this bishop pair that... Um, white has isn't very significant because for uh, first off our bishop on e6 is controlling the long diagonal which the bishop on c4 would love to be on c4 for example but it's but the pressure of the bishop here isn't or the advantage of the bishop here isn't really uh, felt in this position 
Um, so we should be better there, given that we can take on c3 and just double um, white's pawns. Um, and maybe just something that I would like to uh, point out is that the move uh, bishop d5 here is crucial uh, because if we play the move queen takes d5, it's very, uh, I, I would say it's um, close to being lost because we can see that the end game after queen d5 and bishop d5 and knight c3, like for example, bishop b4 and castles uh, queenside, um, white already has significant pressure on this uh, d5 bishop. And for example, if we take on c3, I mean, yeah, just rook takes d5 and we're not, yeah, our bishop is very loose here. Our position is generally just not very good. Uh, white also has the uh, advantage of the bishop here. Bishop b5 is coming and it's not very good. It's not good news at all. So queen d5 just liquidating into a worse endgame is definitely not the way you want to play this. So once we covered uh, knight d2, we will cover the move, the main move in this position, which is knight b3. So there's a lot of theory that uh, goes, um, that starts from this position. So we can obviously play um, bishop e6 in this uh, position, but the reason that um, in most uh, classical Sicilian variations, we want to play bishop e7 as compared to bishop e6 first is because of this move knight d5. And compared to the other variation, uh, we don't have any of these queen a5 tricks because of knight and b3, and this is generally considered good for white. Um, basically, yeah, um, this is already, uh, white already has a significant clamp on the position. For example, c4 or like bishop c4 can come, and it's quite unpleasant here, to be honest. Um, but one, the nice thing to know in this position is that um, because black hasn't like moved the pawn to a6, for example, like in the knight dwarf, we can be flexible here, and oftentimes we can play a5, and like a4, for example, or even if like uh, we play the move a5 and white responds with a4, then we have the juicy b4 square for the knight. Um, maybe not in this specific position, but we can see in other variations. So after knight d5, um, like if, if we're forced to play bishop e7, um, we simply want to get castled, obviously, and try to attack um, white's queen side and try to prove that maybe this knight d5 was kind of premature, um, though it's probably not going to be very successful here. Um, what, it, what can play bishop e3? We can castle, c4, and the move a5 here. And the thing is that um, even though we get this a5 move, um, it's uh, once white gets in c4 and plops a knight on d5, we don't really want to take because the like the c-pawn can take, and suddenly our center is closed, our bishop on e7 is bad. Um, and so generally, white has a very fun time in these positions. But just for your information, um, the line can continue like either queen d2, um, a4, knight c1, knight d7, knight d2, and yeah, uh, this is very interesting, firstly. Uh, we always have ideas of like playing f5, or like playing b6 and knight c5, um, but in general, we can see that with this kind of c4, e4, like kind of Maroxy bind kind of structure, um, what black is not very comfortable. Um, and so, for example, queen d2 is the, maybe the best move, um, there could be other continuations such as bishop e2 um, or the move a4 here which is not good at all because we have the move knight d7 here and strangely uh, because white has fixed the pawn on a4 um, it gives us a very uh, a very easy plan to play just like b6 bishop uh, knight c5 and play the move bishop g5 and once we get in bishop g5 we should actually be um, better here I mean in terms of our strategic um, plan because, um, for example, in this Sveshnikov, uh, you know that once we play like the bishop g5 move, it should be about equal. And um, we can see that basically uh, this plan is very simple to play from, from the black pieces, which is why a4 is typically a concession in this. Uh, it is a concession in this position. Okay. So. So we will cover after a knight b3. We've already covered bishop e6 here, uh, which is not very comfortable after knight d5. We know that. Uh, so the move here is bishop e7. So this is a simple developing move. We just want to castle next move. And then only after we've castled do we play the move bishop e6. So for example, bishop e3 could happen, and we can castle here. Queen d2 could happen, and obviously white just wants to castle queenside. And the move... And the thematic move here is to play the move a5. 
And after a5, we, uh, we obviously want to play a4 and a3. And if uh, white allows us to do that, for example, with castle's queenside, we can just go a4, knight e1. It's a very um, sad looking knight over here. We can play the move a3 and b3. So now we can see that the position has closed up. But how do we exactly punish white for these concessions? Uh, for example, um, uh, you, I mean, I've gotten this specific position uh, against one of my friends uh, playing a blitz game, um, but I, uh, uh, it's kind of difficult if you don't know the specific plan to try to punish um, white here. So we can simply um, improve our position with the move bishop e6 just developing, and knight d5 looks logical, but we can just simply take it with the uh, bishop, and after e takes d5, we play the move knight d4. So the point is that after we play the move a3 and uh, white is uh, obliged to play the move b3, this weakens the long diagonal here, and oftentimes we're okay with giving up a pawn uh, for the sake of getting our bishop to this long diagonal, for example, with the move bishop f6. So like the knight can retreat to d7, and we can play the move bishop f6. For example, um, the move here, bishop d4, is just simply, I would already call it the blunder. We can see the computer evaluation as well. He takes d4, queen takes d4, uh, obviously because we're attacking this pawn. Queen takes d4, uh, we have the move rook a5 here. Obviously, we're ganging up, ganging up on this d5 pawn. So very interesting rook lift. Um, and basically, if yeah, if white, has, if white has to play this move c4, then we can play the move knight d5. And for example, cd5, and I think bishop f6 should be just simply winning here. Um, this knight is, um, doesn't have any defenders, and this white king is completely exposed, and we should be winning this game pretty easily. So that's why um, taking on d4, taking our pawn sacrifice, uh, is not a good idea. And so a logical looking move would be like c4, just to solidify this d5 pawn. Um, and after which we can just retreat with the knight to d7. And obviously uh, we always keep this option open, playing bishop f6, if um, white decides to take on d4. Um, the other move, uh, I mean the other reason that we want to play knight d7 is just to bring it to c5. And it should be a very strong piece from c5. For example, if um, white decides to push it, then we can go to knight. A, we can play knight a4, and these squares around the white king are very weak. So, that's the main plan. And after the move king b1, which is logical, uh, we can play knight f5, for example. Bishop f2, bishop g5, uh, queen c3, bishop f6, queen d2, and knight c5. So, we can just continue this uh, line further. So, bishop d3, knight d4. Bishop d4, ed, ed4, and knight c2. Rook e8, rook g1, and g6. So just uh, preparing Luft, obviously, and just um, weakening this uh, bishop's strength on this diagonal. Rook takes e8, queen e8, rook e1, and queen d7. And I think that just optically we can see that um, it's hard for white to find a specific plan. For example, h4 doesn't work, we can just simply take. g4 is just like a simple waste of time, it's not really helping um, white's position and like uh, these weaknesses around the king are pretty much fatal here even though uh, maybe this seems like a significant positional advantage I would suggest that you play it out with the computer to see how you would fare uh, in this position um, to try to convert this advantage so obviously uh, the move castling is very dubious uh, I mean just like after we play a5 and castling is very dubious so the move here is typically bishop b5 that you want to um, play. Uh, for example, a4 would just allow knight b4, I believe, and we can play d5 in this position, um, or like bishop e6 and then d5, and I think it's already very, uh, very good for black. Um, I've, I've had a couple of games uh, go this way, and I score pretty well in these positions. Um, so the move here, I think, which is most logical is bishop b5, um, just trying to prevent a4 directly. Um, and we can play the move bishop e6 here. And from here, it probably branches out a lot. Uh, as you can see here, there are four main moves that um, white can choose to play. Uh, conceptually, knight d5 um, is not good because uh, similar to the other line that we just discussed, we can play bishop d5, e d5, and the move here that I suggest um, is probably knight a7. Uh, so unlike the typical move of knight b4, which isn't very useful after c4, I believe, yeah, and suddenly this knight isn't like looking very good. A3 is gonna come and um, yeah, this knight is quite awkward actually. 
So instead of knight b4, uh, we're gonna play the move um, knight a7 here to question this uh, to question this bishop, and we can also possibly play a4 the next move. So bishop b2, knight c8. Uh, we also have the plan of like playing b6 or like knight b6, um, and knight d7 for example. This is a typical maneuver. Knight d7. The move rook d1, knight b6. And we can see that there are actually uh, quite a number of games that have gone uh, uh, this route. c4, queen c7, rook c1, and knight e4. So this is a very interesting uh, maneuver. Um, typically, we want to play like knight d7 and knight c5, but given that our knight on e7 wasn't looking too good a few moves ago, for example, um, in this position, it's looking really awkward here. We have this very interesting maneuver that I think only happens in this specific line after knight c8, rook d1, knight b6, c4, queen c7, rook c1, and knight a4. Um, after castles, we can play knight d7, and we have a complete dark square blockade here uh, in this position. Um, yeah, so this should be already um, pretty much all right for black. We also have ideas of f5, obviously, or like bishop f6, or just bringing the knight to c, uh, uh, bringing the knight to c5 and playing b6, for example. It should be very comfortable here. Okay, and so a uh, knight d5, we know of that plan with like taking on d5 with the bishop and then playing knight a7. Um, what if um, white castles kingside here, which looks logical, but it just avoids um, black's comp like entire idea. Um, the move that you saw before, for example, castling uh, queenside here, and this is uh, this is very logical as it prevents the move d5 um, by by black here, but once um, White castles kingside, it's completely ignoring black's play. So we can play the move immediately to uh, d5 here, the typical break. And for e d5, knight d5, knight d5, and we can play queen d5 here. Um, and after queen d5, bishop d5, uh, rook a d1, bishop e6, knight c4, and we can give up the bishop pair here. Um, the continuation would be like bishop c5 and like rook f d8. And basically, I would say that black has enough resources here to. Uh, challenge the default and should be uh, quite okay for um, yeah for black to play here even though they are giving up the bishop pair. Uh, this bishop also on e6 I would argue that it is stronger than the bishop on b4 uh, on b5 its counterpart because of this long diagonal and so I would say that this is uh, there are equal chances in this position in this position. A continuation could be like a3 knight d4 we've actually seen this in a game we can see in 2011 um, bishop d4, e d4, rook f2, rook d6, and we simply want to double up to defend the pawn. So c3, rook e d8, rook f d2, bishop b3, important move. So now we induce the rook to step away from the um, step away from the defense of this uh, or, or the attack of this d pawn, and we can play g6, just getting loop for a king. And I think that after we trade uh, rooks over here, this should be about uh, about equal. Um, though yeah this should lead to equality uh but given that in the middle game there are many opportunities for black uh for both actually both sides to mess up i would say that um white's black's play is more fluid and the plans are more logical i would say okay and the next one is that in this position after um we've played a5 and bishop b5 has come to prevent a4 and we can play bishop b6 um we should probably look at the move rook d1 here, which is uh, the second, um, maybe the most common move actually. Um, and after which we can play this move knight a7. And um, similar to the other position, um, it's not very, it's not very logical to take here because you're giving up the long diagonal, for example. Um, and so, after bishop d3, knight c8. So similar to the other um, maneuver, our castles knight b6. Queen f2, for example, just attacking the uh, b6 knight, knight c4, and now we've uh, successfully gotten this jump in. Bishop c4, bishop c4, rook f1, uh, and I say, uh, and I would say that this is like about equal. But I would, um, I would evaluate this position like it's definitely playable for both sides, but um, it looks far more, far easier to play from the black side because like um, white's position looks solid and uh, quite good actually. But how would how would black uh, how would white like to continue this um, position? For example, we have many ideas, knight seven, for example, or like queen c seven, or a four, or like bringing the rooks in. 
Um, meanwhile, White uh, is kind of um, struggling to find a, like the best plan. So, uh, and also instead of Queen F2 just attacking this knight, uh, something important to note is the move Rook F1, and after which we can play the move Knight C4. Uh, and this is obviously just we want to take this bishop if we can just to get rid of this uh, strong bishop on this diagonal and if a uh, bishop c4 uh, bishop c4 a4 um, queen c7 queen f2 queen c6 so uh, we're putting pressure here and after bishop b6 we can play the move uh, the interesting move bishop d8 and we're simply defending x-raying this pawn and i think that this is sh this should be a um, fairly reasonable position for example, bishop d8, rook f d8, and we want to strike with d5. So knight d2 looks reasonable. And there's this interesting move that I would like to suggest, which is rook a c8. Basically seeing that we're happy if we get this uh, trade down the board because uh, we have massive control over the c file. And this should be uh, okay to play, um, yeah, uh, even, even though we're giving up the bishop. But this is obviously like, uh, these are obviously intricacies of the position that you could uh, revise over and over again. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue to see the other lines, knight e7, bishop d3, knight c8, castles, knight b6, uh, rook f1, knight c4, bishop c4, bishop c4, a4, queen c7, as we've seen before, queen f2, queen c6, bishop b6, and bishop d8. We can continue like this, takes takes, knight d2, and rook c8, and okay, we can see that once we play the rook to c8, we've actually given, um, white the opportunity to to play queen a7, a very interesting move, just to attack the a5 pawn, uh, or uh, white can simply take on c4, and like uh, we can get to this uh, position that we've just discussed. Um, but the move queen a7 here is interesting, after which we can just play, for example, rook a8 and queen f2. I mean, we can obviously offer a draw here. Um, I mean, uh, typically in these positions, um, it's about equal, but white, you know, having the first move is slightly better, so I mean. Personally, I wouldn't mind after going through all of these, um, um, after going through this complex middle game to go for a draw. I mean, if our opponent is um, more experienced, for example, or high rated. Uh, but we can also play like uh, instead of rook ac8 and try to go for like uh, that drawing line with queen e7. We can also play the move bishop e6 here, just retreating. And we're still trying to get a game here, basically. And so these knights are a bit clumsy, right? We can see like. Uh, this knight is uh, this knight looks good, but it can't really move to like b5 for example or d5 because like the c2 pawn is hanging. Um, and so, how would you want to improve these knights? Uh, one maybe uh, interesting maneuver is just to play knight um, knight the the d knight the d knight to b1 and try to bring it to a3 for example. So h6 giving luft, rook d2 defending c2. Uh, over defending actually, and the rook d7, knight b5, and rook d8. So we're very stubborn so uh, to play this, uh, to try to play d5. And so rook e3, queen c5, just uh, adding a pin here, uh, sorry, uh, adding a pin here, and rook d3, uh, we can trade for example, and play the move d5 here. And I think this is already a liberating position, and black has fully equalized here. And we can also note that there's a bishop that black has the bishop in the end game, which I think is better than these uh, than these knights. I mean, either one of these knights. Okay. So, uh, we've discussed um, those moves. Rook d1, for example, here. Uh, rook d1, which is the most common move. And after which, uh, we can obviously play knight a7 and go for that line that we've just discussed with knight c8. But, um, what if they play the seemingly logical castles. I think that in this position, um, knight e7 is no longer a, a good move. Even though it's, played, it's been played a couple of times and we can see that actually a black scores quite well here. I think that uh, after checking also with the engine, for example, um, after bishop a7, uh, bishop a7, rook takes a7, and a4, suddenly white has locked this structure uh, on the queen side and it's not really easy for black to find any play in this position. Um, because we can't really get in d5, for example, and the knight, the knight can always jump to d5 to either, even further clamp on the position. And so I don't think knight a7 is a good move, um, which is why I recommend the move here, knight b4. So this was introduced by uh, Vasily Vanchuk in 2005. 
basically the idea is just to play d5 here and so uh like a move like a3 just destabilizes the knight on b3 and so it's not really favorable um so we can see the continuation is after uh a3 we can play the very strong move queen c7 just sacrificing a piece but it's very dangerous to take this piece because um of the open a file and uh this b3 knight is very unstable that i've mentioned as i mentioned before uh, besides queen c7 um other moves are not really very good very appealing because of d5 is already probably a mistake here uh, because of a b4 and d4 uh, this has been played once um by ivan chuk this is actually the game that i'm that i'm referencing um but um here um alexei fedorov actually made a mistake here with um i believe that um knight takes d4 was played in this position yeah and this already leads to equality because um i don't see how um black has actually gained anything like significant here i mean it's not enough to play for the win uh, okay c4 is a mistake but uh, basically i mean objectively speaking this should be a fine position if not for that c4 move that um white has just played so we don't need to go into the practical discussion um basically um these lines after d5 uh, are not very appealing and i'll just end it at that you can check the bgn yourself uh in the link in the description below um and other moves like bishop b3 are not very good because white can simply check on b3 and it looks like it's a weakness like this uh, double pawns but it's not there's not really a good way to exploit it for example we just gave away our bishop which was like the a piece that was attacking the light squares on um, white's queen side which now we have given up and we don't really have significant play here for example knight a6 king b1 knight c7 bishop c4 and suddenly the d5 square is controlled by white way too many times and um basically it's hard for black to find a good plan here which is why uh, in this move in this position i recommend the move queen c7 um okay so firstly we will see what happens after a b4 we can play the move bishop b3 here so we're gonna win our piece back because after c um yeah c b3 and a b4 we're gonna win our piece back on c3 here or we could actually uh try to make use of this uh pin and for example after uh king b1 we can play the interesting move queen a5 because this knight has been destabilized this bishop is also um very weak and we can it's more favorable probably to take this bishop because we want to keep the pawn on b4 and not just like give it up for this knight and like fix white structure for example and so after the move queen a5 here um the move bishop a4 is probably like the only way to keep the game going because after bc3 queen c3 and the move b5 here um we're gonna trap this a uh, bishop but black uh, but white is gonna get a rook in exchange so here we can see that queen a5 rook a5 bishop d2 and we and we're gonna double up here basically we're not letting go of this a uh, trap bishop but we're giving up a rook in order to get these two bishops takes takes rook c1 and the important move g5 here um even the okay the engine evaluation actually is incorrect here um the strongest move is into g5 because we can take this bishop when we want to um and we're just freeing up the king uh, preventing like possible counterplay with f4 and at some point we also possibly can play d5 there and we're going to be i think on the favorable end of this end game um yeah so that's probably the only way that um with the bishop, with the move bishop a4 that um what can keep the game going but the move that has been played previously um in 2019 for example is the move 94 which is just a uh, complete um wrong uh, completely wrong i mean uh, understand understanding of the position because after queen takes b5 and uh, queen d3 we can simply play queen a5 and like we have threats of b5 there and after the move bishop b6 which looks dangerous like where is this queen gonna go after queen a6 basically um yeah if, if we trade the pieces and like um yeah this knight on a4 isn't very happy it can't even go to c5 it can't retreat uh this bishop is blocking its own path and we can play like for example b5 try to kick the knight away or like play rook c8 and try to increase the pressure so it's very uncomfortable here to trade the queens so after the move queen e3 just defending the bishop we can play the move rook fc8 cutting off the king and after rook c1 knight d7 
and suddenly it's kind of um, this is a significant problem here we have a threat of rook uh, knight takes b6 knight b6 uh, and then queen a2 for example uh, or we can just see the threats of like knight c5 there yeah we have the threat knight c5 as well so this is a uh, something that looks probably um, logical i mean from the it looks logical from white's perspective to play like castles and um and go for all these complications because it doesn't seem like um black should be able to get an advantage but actually it's very tricky to get um to play these kind of positions uh where white has castled uh, queenside so that's basically um it from the main line uh after the move knight b3 after e5 and knight b3 and that pretty much covers everything um almost everything um in this f3 variation so the last thing that i would like to discuss is the move knight takes d4 so this is another option that um that black can try to choose the idea is to go for uh is to is to try to get a favorable version of the dragon with g6 and bishop g7 so this uh doesn't allow basically knight takes e6 uh, knight takes d4 immediately doesn't allow uh white to play bishop e3 and then taking on d4 with the bishop that's very important because once um, white has played bishop e3 and we take on d4 and they take with the bishop the bishop stands very strong on the uh, on the long diagonal and our g uh, and our g7 uh, dragon bishop uh, would be highly contested and uh, with g4 h4 h5 coming it's not going to be very pleasant so if we take on d4 now and then queen takes d4 we can play the move g6 here and try to get um, the favorable version of the dragon um, the reason that I don't recommend this um, way of playing is because of the move bishop b5 check. This is the computer's top choice, and it is indeed uncomfortable after the move, the force move bishop d7, takes on d7, queen d7, bishop e3, bishop g7, castles queen side, and queen c6. Because obviously we castle, castle now, then there's e5. So we need to play queen c6, queen d3, and knight d7, for example. And this is an important move. Um, for example, we castle, uh, white is going to get bishop d4, and the whole idea that I've mentioned before is that this bishop is strong on the diagonal, and if we move the knight, white is very uh, happily going to take the bishop and remove our defender, our key defender. Which is why we play on knight d7, um, bishop d4, and then we can take, and then play f6. And basically, I mean, this is the, probably the only move to keep black in the game. But we can see that we're not very happy to play this position after playing f6. I mean, this is definitely not what we want. So after h4, queen c5, just trying to get a trade of queens. Queen d5, and we're just going to trade here. Rook c8, rook d4, king f7, rook, yeah, rook b4, knight b6, and h5, g5, rook d1, rook c7, and g4. Okay, we can just continue a few more moves like rook hc8, rook b3, just defending against the exchange sack ideas. Knight d7, rook e2, a6, a4, and knight e5. Um, okay, specifically in this position, this is probably okay for uh, black. Um, but there are many uh, other um, there are many other deviations that could happen. I mean, this is not forced at all. And I think that after the move f6 or or even like um, bishop d4, yeah, this is um, definitely something that black does not want yeah the computer already gives us a pretty good evaluation um and white should be significantly better here though the line that i showed you probably wasn't the best choice for white to take uh and white just uh, black just consolidated and got a significantly better position because of the blockade uh on the position or slightly better position i would say but given that um this is the reason probably why i don't recommend um playing knight takes d4 and the g6 is because of this move bishop b5 check uh, but something that has been discussed uh, in Alexei Molinsky's book uh, is the move bishop g5 immediately trying to question um, black setup uh, after bishop g7 and the move like, the interesting move maybe is knight d5 here and it's immediately like uh, asking um, black what what kind of setup do you want to take because white is indeed threatening to take on f6 and double the pawns, for example. But here after castles, I mean, it's not really uh, beneficial for 
um, why to go for the sequence. For example, e f6, bishop, f, bishop h5, uh, queen a5, um, c3, and f5. Uh, we're attacking this guy, and okay, we're attacking the pawn, but we should get significant compensation after like f e4, and um, yeah, this should be just um, maybe, I would say, um, playable definitely for um, black. So if knight d5 isn't uh, the best move, white can simply try to castle, and after castles, uh, okay, there are many moves here, maybe the one that I'll just discuss is the move queen b4. This was the one maybe that's, um, yeah, th this was uh, introduced by um, Grandmaster Jan, Jan Elvist. Um, so the point of queen b4 is to play the move e5, obviously, but it does allow us to play the move a5 just to harass the queen. And after queen a3, bishop e6, e5, we can play the move 98 here, and we should be completely fine. Um, so for example, e d6, knight d6, and there are many ways that actually um, white can mess up here. For example, bishop takes e7 is a mistake because of queen e7 uh, winning back the piece, but then after queen f6, we're going to get um, the open file. We can play a4, a3. Uh, we have the uh, two bishop and the two diagonals as well. This is going to be crushing for uh, for black. White is going to get crushed here. So there are many ways that uh, and many deviations that um, white can choose and then eventually just like go wrong. And I'm not going to cover all of them. You can dis uh, you can discover them by yourselves from my analysis uh, in the VGN uh, in the description below, um, because uh, this video is also getting very lengthy, and it's a lot of material as well. But what I would recommend is basically to go for the main line uh, with e5 and try to test out the waters after like for example going for the main line and you'll notice that i mean personally at least i feel that after you play the move a5 and once white plays the move a4 personally i'm very happy to play this kind of position after knight b4 we get a nice outpost um we have a simple plan bishop b6 if we can play queen c7 or like d5 then we're going to be very happy and it's uh, very practical i believe so this obviously depends on your personal um, tastes, if you like the position or not. And I would recommend you to play like some blitz games or some rapid games online to test out the waters in this opening. So I think that will be it for me um, on this specific variation of the move 6f3. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, you, took, a, you took away a lot of um, important pointers um, in this opening. Um, it may seem like overwhelming at first because you need to um, learn so many things in this move f3 um, on move 6 and there's so many deviations that could occur um, and it may not seem the most intuitive at first but I would argue that this is probably the uh, the easiest uh, Sicilian to play I would say because uh, for example things like the uh, Taimanov and the Nidorf are very well researched and are probably the two most uh, common Sicilians that uh, players nowadays are studying and are playing. Uh, meanwhile, the classical Sicilian is uh, in the modern day and age not very, um, not as highly um, played in like for example top levels, and as a result, club players also do not uh, generally play this opening, and so they don't know what they're doing typically, and we can try to take advantage of it. So yeah, this has been Garuda Pura. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, please provide your um, do give your feedback in the comments below. Um, and if there are any uh, questions or things that you'd like to ask about the analysis, please do ask in the comments down below. So thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, stay safe and have fun playing chess. Bye bye.